Psalms 84 to the chief musician upon Gideth a psalm for the sons of Korah and again the sons of Korah are the family of the Levites how amiable lovely are thy tabernacles O Lord of hosts Korah was to be there in the temple from the very beginning when with Moses the tabernacle they built the tent and all that to uh, Solomon's temple Korah was to be there with all the priests and the Levites and what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the temple my soul longeth yea even fainteth for the courts of the Lord now that courts if you go read the description that it says when Solomon built it not only did he build the, 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 the holy place the most holy place in the courtyard that one courtyard that had the, the brazen altar and the uh, labor, but he built other places and other buildings and other storage areas around the tabernacle for the priest's store, for the place for the animals, for the uh, storage areas. And what they're describing is the courts of the Lord is this beautiful place that Solomon had, had designed in the temple. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. When are they going to cry out Sunday? Being April 18th, I believe it is, 2014. My eyes are a little bit messed up right now. Let me tell you what's going to happen Sunday. If your church celebrates or mentions in your worship Easter, you are not a Bible church. Easter is a Roman holiday. Easter is not Bible. And then you're going to have all kinds of activities, events that goes with that Easter religion. And you're not going to be calling upon the God of the Bible, the living God. I don't care if you're a Baptist church. I don't care if you're a born-again Christian. Easter is not the living God. It is not the King James Bible God. It's a Roman holiday. Go look it up in Acts. The Romans celebrated Easter while Peter celebrated the Passover. I think that was the holiday. Yea, the sparrow has found a house. And Jesus said, you know, doesn't God see the sparrows? Doesn't God feed them? And the swallow type of bird, a nest for herself. Homes for birds. Where the where she may lay her young eggs, even thy altars. What is thy altars there? Why is it plural? The brazen altar, the incense altar. It's saying there that these birds are allowed to make their homes where the Lord is. The birds see more than what the Israelites saw. The birds see more than what the Levites saw. Now remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Not every single Levite got to go into the tabernacle. A bird saw more than what your average Israelite saw. And God allowed it. And birds are a type of demons or devils. I prefer devils. Demons, you can get little good demons and little bad demons. Now, truly, the Bible says devils. Mark chapter 4. So even in your worship, pure worship of God, you can have devils in your service. Not everybody is saved. Not all the priests that did service for the Lord were right in the heart. O Lord of hosts, my King, capital K, and my God. Well, it's funny because the nation did not want God as their King. They wanted to be like the nations. 
But here the psalm writer acknowledges God as king. And not only God, but my God, my king. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. And will be still praising thee, Selah. Uh-oh, Selah. There's that Selah again. Second Advent passage. Uh, Listen, that, that temple that's not there today is going to be there during the tribulation. That temple is going to be there in the millennium. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Strength is in God. Not weaponry, not muscles, not iron, not money, not anything but God. Listen, you put your strength in God, God will take care of the money. God will take care of the house. God will take care of the food. Then we just read about the sparrow and the swallow. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, listen, about anxiety, why are you worrying? Doesn't God clothe the field? Doesn't God... Visit the death of the bird. Doesn't God feed the birds? Why are you worrying? That swallow that makes a nest in, in, the, in the house there, she takes care of her young. She don't go marching down off the welfare. God takes care of her. Trust in God for your strength for everything. In whose heart are the ways of them. God will guide your heart when you put your trust and belief in him. You don't think he's capable of taking care of you? Oh, oh I want to say that. Yeah, but you do when you go rely on man. And that's the church age today, Revelation 3. We are rich. We got increase of goods. You're not relying on God. Your strength is in that building. And numbers. And programs and anything else you want to add. It's not God. God's not in these churches. Who passes through the valley of Becca. I've read a lot of commentaries about this. And it meant something to the psalmist, can I say. Make a well. The rain also fills the pool. Well and rain, water is the source of living. The order that you need to sustain life is found in the Bible. God breathed in a man, he became a living soul. The first thing you need that you can't lack is air. You lack air and oxygen, and that defies your brain. And the fact is, if you go so long without oxygen to your brain, you may come out alive, but you may, and I'm going to say this respectfully, as, a, as you may come out as a vegetable. Your resources and your body of lack of, of, of oxygen to the brain, and you're not going to be to the full facility that you were before. It does damage to your brain cells. It does damage to your body. You need air, number one. Number two, you need water. You can survive more without a Big Mac or a Whopper or any kind of meal. But if you deprive yourself of oxygen or, secondly, you deprive yourself of water dehydration, again, you can do your body great damage, your kidneys. They can shut down. And then thirdly is your food. The longest you can live without would be is food. So verse six, like I said, I read a lot of commentaries, and I had different stories. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts. Hear my prayer. You ever prayed that? You ever been praying to God and say, God, hear my prayer? 
It's in the Bible. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. You know, prayer is not just saying you just get on your knees, fold your hands, and amen. Prayer is a letter to God. Prayer is talking to God like you talk on a phone. Prayer is like you're going down the road and there's no one in the passenger seat but Jesus. I'm not talking about Jesus the co pilot. I'm saying is Jesus is your friend, He's your companion. That's what I'm saying. When you're at work and, and, and you can carry a conversation on with Jesus while you're working, that's prayer. Prayer is not always say, oh, Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. I say, Lord, I, you know, aren't we having a good day here at work? And thank you for this rain that I just got caught in. And, Lord, uh, thank you for this car running. And Lord, uh, protect me while, while I'm on this road with these drivers. Lord, protect my family. I'm leaving. Lord, I just want to lift this person up in prayer. Lord, I got this problem. Lord, I just want to thank you for thanking you just to thank you. That's all a prayer. Behold, our, O oh God, our shield, Selah, protection against the Antichrist. Protect, listen, shield. What, what does Ephesians say that Paul says about that shield? What is the shield? Faith. All right, Paul says the shield of faith, so what is God? God is to be your faith. All right. I think Mary can get me through. Who'd you just put your faith in? Well, if I go on a pilgrimage to this city, would you just put your faith through? That water, whether it was sprinkled, dipped, or whatever you want to call it, wiki, would you just put your faith in? See, that water will get me through. That water will get me to heaven. That's that shield. Oh, God, our shield. God is to be your faith. And look upon the face of thy anointed. I'm going to ask the priest, the king, or the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Go back in your Bible and read what other people could be. I don't know if the Nazarite could have been. I don't know if they were anointed. That's to have oil put upon you. That was the high priest. That was the priest. That was the king. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. Thine anointed. For a day in thy courts. Again, surrounded by the temple. Solomon had built courts for all kinds of uh, instruments, gatherings. Is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, usher, in the house of my God. Now that must have been a lowly position to be just, you know, you're just a doorkeeper. And I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I wonder how many doorkeepers you have in Baptist churches today. And then once church is done, they're in their wickedness. I apply that verse both ways. Hi, right, I'm an usher. I've been in churches where they got the little name tag. I'm usher. I look around and say, well, gee, you the same family. I see five ushers. Oh, no, that's my tag. It tells me who I am in this church. Oh, I thought you were a family. So you got the tag, you're the usher. Does that make you, you know, what do you do outside the church? The writer's here saying, listen, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents. Listen, a doorkeeper of the house of the Lord, I mean, you went to work that day, you, you did your service, and you came home. Dwell in the tents is you went where the wicked tent is and you lived there. That's what he's talking about. 
I'd rather go back and forth every day to the temple than just stay in one tent where there's wickedness. You know what a lot of Christians do today? They dwell in the world. Listen, your entire life is not serving God. Well, I just heard 40,000 Baptist preachers just fall down and have a heart attack. You know, you've got to sleep. You can't be on the street preaching, passing out gospel tracts 24 hours. There's got to be a time when you say, hey, listen, I'm going to go out and pass out tracts. I'm going to go out and witness. I'm going to go out and preach on the street. And then there's got to be a time where that ends. you got to go to work. you got to give your wife time. you got to give your husband time. you got to give your children time. And then there's a time to go to church. And there's a time to come home from church. There's a time for a nap, and there's time for not a nap. There's a time to read your Bible, and there's a time to pray. And there's a time to go out and check your oil in your car. There's a time to go out and mow the lawn. There are different times of things, but there are people who dwell in wickedness. Everything they do is wickedness. And there are people out there who are born-again Christians who love the Lord, and they put everything in a proper thing. And when, it's, when I have the opportunity to serve the Lord, I'm going to. But I'm going to live. i got to live. got to make money. got to eat. For the Lord God is a son. Now, we already saw water. We've already talked about air. You know, you cannot live without the sun. And there's so much in this verse here. For right now, light, John 1, and light, as we see, and life. Sun gives life. Number two, when we saw the sila, when the, the sun's going to go dark, the moon's going to turn to blood, there's going to be absolutely no light, artificial or natural. The stars are not even going to shine. There's going to be no light in bugs. And guess what they're going to look? They're going to look towards the north, and they're going to see this light like a choo-choo train. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I guess it's expression. Here comes the sun of righteousness, S-O-N. And they're going to run from that light because their, their deeds are wicked according to John 3.19. And shield. Protection. You know what you do when you sit out and bail with your half-naked body? You get burned. And if you do it too often, you get cancer. But you get in the right sun. And you get life and light. And shield. Protection. God in the Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate protection. We've already seen again. It is faith. Did you just see that? I would love to have a Jehovah Witness come knocking on that door right now. Come on in. You're not supposed to. For this, I would let them in. Uh, please open your perverted Bible. Let's read my King James Bible. And it says that. Verse 9, Behold, our God, O God, our shield. Verse 11, For the Lord God is a son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and shield. Verse 9 and verse 11 applies the shield to God the Father and God the Son. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. Look at that. God in verse 9 and Lord God in verse 11. How do you like that? The Lord will give grace and glory. That's what you want. Satan will give you everything else. Satan never shows grace. He never shows mercy. He never shows glory. He never protects you. They'll damn you. 
and enjoy it. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How do you like that one? God is the author, author of good things. You say, well, I got this disease or I got this thing and all that. Were you walking uprightly? Well, yeah, I was. All have sinned come short of glory of God. Or maybe all that live, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Well, I get harassed. I, I, I get... You know, kicked and I get beaten and, and 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 I have really no friends and and and, and wait to the judgment seat of Christ and see what you get. See, Jesus said, "Look to the look to heaven, not the earth. Everything down here is going to melt, corrupt, and and burn up one day. The good things are yet to come." Well. You know, God gave me a, a job where I could pay my bills and my my family's happy. That's a blessing he just gave you. That's grace and glory. Good thing is when you can have fellowship in heaven and glory in New Jerusalem with that family. Wearing a crown is a good thing. Casting your crowns at Jesus is a good thing. Well, we got this big church building. That's going to burn up, Peter said. You got to walk uprightly to get good things. So, should you ask in prayer to God for good things in your life when you don't walk uprightly? James says you ask a miss because you consume it upon your lust. You know what one of the things you can tell that your life is right with God? Is you got grace and glory. When you kind of, and I'll tell you the testimony, it's kind of haphazard prayer. I didn't really pray it, but I prayed it. Tracy came to me and said, you know, Rachel's going to need some clothes. She, she's out there in the garden. She's playing with miracle Grow and fertilizers and all that. She's just growing like a weed. I'm like, oh, Lord, I need help. And not even what, a day, two days later, we get, a, we get offered a bag of clothes that we get three days later. And... We need a little more. We went down to the store. Sign says three fifty. I don't know what the dresses were. It wasn't over there, and the, the shirts were two fifty. And the guy says six bucks, whatever it was. I had it in my pocket. And then we we talk about it later on, and and, she, and Tracy says the guy said he, I heard him say to another person, all the clothes in the store are for a dollar today. That's God answering prayer. And that's a testimony to God, not who I am and what I've done. I'm a sinner. And if you don't believe I'm a sinner, you come to my job site and listen to me talk to myself after I deal with one person. I'll show you about griping and complaining. I'll show you I'm a sinner. God takes care of us because we're trying to do right. And he will meet our needs. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. What is the blessing of the man that trusts in thee? He gets eternal life. Every man that you meet, now listen to me. Every man that you meet in New Jerusalem, the Bible says that the gates are open all the time. The Jews and the Gentiles are going to be coming. Those, those 
trees are on, the tree of life on either side of the river are for the nations for healing. The Jew gets the new earth because that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the, uh, it? the foundations of the Jewish tribes or, the, or the, the gates. One of them is the tribes, and one of them is the apostles. Those Jews are going to come through the gates. The Gentiles are going to come through the gates. Everybody you meet in heaven trusted in God. Everyone that you don't meet and watch get cast in the lake of fire did not trust God. Well, Brother Stolly, uh, I know my aunt. She trusted God. and She went to the Catholic Church and she went to hell. She didn't trust in God. She trusted in man. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So you got to be careful in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 or 3. God, Paul says that there's another Jesus, there's another spirit, and there's another gospel. you got to trust the God of the Bible, the Lord. Everyone that trusts in the way, the truth, and the life in this church age, everyone who is trusted in God, every single person that died in the flood of Noah's time, they're going to go to the lake of fire, they're in hell today, did not trust God. How do you know? God left the door open. And Jesus said, I am the door. Noah and his family trusted God. They're in heaven. Lot. What's the Bible say about him? He was just. He trusted the Lord. He just wanted to linger around a little while. Oh, he believed the angels. What did the Bible said? He did more than your worldly Christian. He went and told his family. Did he not? So he had to trust the angels and believe in faith. He didn't even know they were angels. The Lord of hosts blesses the man that trusted in thee. Lot was spared. His wife didn't trust. She did not do what God told her to do. She turned back. Every man, I don't care what dispensation from Adam to the last Joe. If they're going to be in glory, it's because they blessed is the, that trusted in thee, God. Whatever God told them in that dispensation, that period of time, they trusted God to get them through. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And what did we see? Faith. We saw faith in the shield. Jesus Christ is my shield. I am trusting in nothing more for heaven than Jesus. That's it. Nothing. When I came out of the Roman Catholic Church, when I was in the Roman Catholic Church, it was Mary, it was the, the, the supper, the, the, the blood, and, and well, the mass. It was going into the priest and confessing to him in the room. It was this, 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 now they did this, now they do this, and now you do this. And that's not trusting God. And all those that are cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, are they that did not trust. So when you're dealing with somebody about their soul, you got to find out what they are trusting in. Just because they say they're saved, yeah, I, I, I'm, what are they trusting in? I'll tell you what a, what a dangerous thing I've seen down here in Florida. Say this prayer. It's not what the Bible says. It says the gospel is according to scripture. You got to open the book. So we'll close here with chapter eight, uh, 84 of the temple and the true God.
consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, 